healthy foods are all in On Blanche Sabelle Derby, you'll be seeing excerpts from my video, Edible Plants, Wild and Tame, in which I go out into the field to identify and then cook weeds and cultivated plants. Before we begin, here are some rules of the field. Positively identify the plant. Ask a knowledgeable person or use guidebooks. When in doubt, throw it out. It didn't cost anything in the first place. Eat small portions in case of an allergic reaction. Know which parts to eat and when. Some plants have poisonous parts and have a time when they taste the best. Learn about poisonous plants in your area. Don't overpick. Practice conservation. Since most of these plants are weeds and are very common, this shouldn't be a problem. Avoid contaminated areas like roadsides and sprayed spots. Wash plants thoroughly. Sprinkle delicate flowers with a fine mist sprayer. Even though they're called Jerusalem artichokes, these perennial plants are native to America and not related to artichokes at all. Their tall stalks seem to reach for the waning warmth of the September sun to nourish the edible tubers that lie underneath them. Their leaves and stalks are covered with rough hairs that make them feel like sandpaper. Jerusalem artichoke flowers are small and have yellow centers, unlike their sunflower cousins that have brown centers filled with seeds. Jerusalem artichoke reproduces by tubers that resemble ginger roots. They can be harvested during any time of year, but the best time is after a frost, usually in late October or November. They stay fresh underground throughout the colder months and can also be collected in early spring, long before other vegetables are available. Spring tubers are sweeter than autumn ones. Tubers grow in a radius of several feet from the parent plants. Use a trowel to dig them, since they're not buried too deeply. No matter how many tubers you pick, there's always plenty left behind for next year. Jerusalem artichoke is the vegetable equivalent of the man who came to dinner. Once they're planted, you can't get rid of them. Some are small as marbles, others are as large as beets, and some are covered with knobby projections that resemble swollen joints. They need to be cleaned because their crevices trap dirt. To get into those hard to reach areas, use a toothbrush and lightly scrub under running water. Their thin outer skin doesn't need to be removed. If you do peel them, they discolor quickly. So soak them in a solution of cold water and one teaspoon squeezed lemon or vinegar. Since tubers lose moisture through their skin and don't store well, dig what you need and leave the rest in the ground until later on. Jerusalem artichoke is an ideal vegetable for dieters and diabetics because it's low in calories. Instead of starch, it contains inulin, a polysaccharide that isn't rapidly processed into sugars by the body. This is the same ingredient that causes flatulence when you eat beans. Warning, not everyone digests these tubers easily. Some people experience gassiness and slight cramps after eating them. Start out with a small amount to find out how you react. Because they superficially resemble potatoes, many expect Jerusalem artichokes to taste like them. Well, they don't. They are crisp, more watery and thinner textured, with a mild, slightly Swedish taste similar to water chestnuts. Unlike potatoes, they can be eaten raw, sliced thinly and used in creamy dips or salads. 
use them cooked in casseroles, soups, or as a vegetable. Don't overcook, as a few minutes can make the difference between a vegetable that's moist or one that's too mushy. Avoid cast iron pots because they turn these tubers black. Save the gelatinous broth for soup stock. Jerusalem artichoke casserole is a good side dish. This recipe makes four small servings. You can double it if you wish. Start with two cups boiled and mashed tubers. Add one cup breadcrumbs, one quarter cup oil or melted butter, one beaten egg, and black pepper to taste. Mix thoroughly, put into an oiled dish, and bake at 375 degrees for 30 minutes. After it's done, sprinkle the top with diced scallions. I'd be willing to bet that anyone who has these tubers growing in their yard will gladly give you some to take home. Healthy foods are all